One company that I've been looking at is Chewy. I purchased my pet food and supplies from them. The stock is down 32% from its all-time high, so this looks like a buying opportunity at first. Chewy is an online pet food and hard goods retailer. The company offers its own products as well as operates as a distributor for other pet food and hard goods brands. They are also looking to expand further into pet health care. In 2020, $104 billion was spent on pets in the U.S. And that number is expected to grow to $110 billion in 2021. Chewy had $7.7 billion in sales in the last 12 months, so the company still has a lot of room to grow. In its most recent fiscal year, the company grew its top line by 47% year-over-year, but the company also became more profitable and generated higher cash inflows. Chewy decreased its net loss from $253 million in 2019 to $92 million in 2020. Chewy also increased its net operating cash flow from $42 million in 2019 to $135 million in 2020. Chewy spent $131 million of its net operating cash flow on capital expenditures. We really like to see this. Aside from software companies, you want growth companies to have higher capital expenditures than depreciation. This indicates that they're investing for future growth. Looking at the company's current and quick ratio, it doesn't look like Chewy have any liquidity issues. They don't have any real debt besides for operating leases. Something interesting, Chewy has a negative cash conversion cycle. A cash conversion cycle measures how long a firm will be deprived of cash if it increases its investment in inventory in order to expand customer sales. A good cash conversion cycle is a short or negative one. It means the company's working capital is not tied up for long and its business has greater liquidity. Many other online retailers also have low or negative cash conversion cycles because they drop ship instead of maintaining inventory. The companies get paid right away when customers buy products and do not have to pay for the inventory until the customers already paid for them. Here are what I view to be the critical drivers behind my story for Chewy. 1. Growing sales from existing customer base. A Chewy customer, especially those on auto ship, are shown to be very loyal. The company notes that customer year 2 tends to spend 400 per year, 700 in years 3, and 900 in year 4. As pet needs and the willingness to spend for pets continues to rise, Chewy will be there to capture that growing spending. 2. Acquiring new customers. Given the high level of customer satisfaction that the company sees from its customers, I believe that there is significant opportunity to grow its business as consumers become more aware of the brand and a strong value proposition. 3. Expanding Chewy's proprietary brands. As Chewy pushes to grow its own brands, the company will be able to achieve higher margins. 4. Expanding further into pet health care. The company's Chewy Health offering has built out a connect with a vet service, and it has also rolled out a pet pharmacy as well. Chewy is becoming a one-stop shop for everything pet health care related, and this can both accelerate Chewy's growth and grow its margins. Here's how my thesis translates into numbers. I expect a 25% top-line growth for years 1 to 5. Afterwards, the growth will approach the risk-free rate of 1.44% by year 10. I use the US 10-year treasury note as my risk-free rate. I expect the company's operating margins to be slightly above the industry average by year 5. The company will maintain those margins going forward. Chewy's previous net losses will keep its tax rate zero to year 5. Afterwards, it will approach the marginal tax rate of 25% by year 10. The company's sales to capital ratio for computing reinvestment is 1.8, the industry average. My calculated cost of capital is 6.5, that figure will go down to 5.8% by year 10. This gets me an estimated value per share of $38.85. While this company has a lot of things going for it, at the current trading price of $80.55 per share, the shares are overvalued. 
I really like this company and its value proposition, so I'll keep my eye on this company. If the share price falls below my estimated fair value, I'll definitely purchase a position.